doing my addiction for eight years. For eight years being a slut, a prostitute, a hoe, a stone dope fiend. I mean, sitting up here selling my body for hits of dope, sucking dicks for $2, jumping in and out of cars, this car, that car, till my feet was the color of the pavement, you hear me? I mean, just all the way out there with a I don't give a damn attitude. But it was this dope man that I kept tricking with would always pay somebody to come find me. And i go to him, go to his house. Till mm. so sooner or later he was requesting for me all the time. That made me end up just end up sleeping with really just him. Mm. So you know what happened after that. Mm. I got hooked on the man. Got hooked on this here dope dealer. Mm. Fell in love with this dope dealer till I wouldn't trick with nobody but him. You hear me? So I wanted a baby by him. I fell in love with him. I even moved in with him and his mom. His mom, for some reason, she couldn't stand me. But this dope dealer, he had an alcohol problem. He was on gin real bad. And he would always beat on me for, for the same stuff he was out there doing. If I'm out there tricking, he knew what type of person I was before I had started hooking up with him. But he was doing the same thing. When he couldn't find me, he will be up there tricking, but he would always beat me for the same thing that he was out there doing. And you know what? I fell in love with him. Not with the ass beatings, but I fell in love with him. Moved in with him. His mom used to encourage him to whoop my ass. He got, I don't know how many sisters and brothers were living, 11 of them living in the house, now that I remember. 11 adults living in one house. And you know what? They all would sit back in chairs and recliner and watch this nigga beat the hell out of me. Mm. And I still wouldn't leave him. And then when my family would see me, I'd cover it up. I would never tell them that he was whooping on me. And he really didn't have no reason to whoop on me. It was just the old jealous spirit that he had, had on him. He loved me, but he was jealous. But I never, I ain't quit slowing down, tricking with other men though. Just cause of how I started feeling towards him. The next thing you know, I wanted a baby pie. Mm. Took me a long time to ever want a child. Mm. I ain't never want one. But I wanted one by this here old fat ass man. He was fat too. Bald headed with a big old belly. When we lay down in the bed, I couldn't go to sleep unless I was holding him. Not him holding me. I was holding him. Mm. I was always skinny whether I was on drugs or not. Mm. Then he got popped. We had to move out the house with his mom because me and her kept getting into it. That man used to shoot at me. I, I used to feel the air of a bullet going by my, by my ear because he will shoot at me. He will catch me coming out of one of them smoke houses and that's, there I go. I'm going to take off running. I'm going to leave my shoes. I'm going to be barefooted. You know, I was a country girl anyway. Mm. But it hurted me how his mom would treat me and how she would encourage him to whoop me. Uh, she would drink that hot bush beer. And she lived a long time too. I couldn't stand her, God forgive me. But anyway, I ended up getting pregnant. And he didn't believe that it was his child because he didn't believe that I was only screwing him. But it ended up being his child. Even through my whole nine months of pregnancy, that man beating me with anything he could get his hands on. That's what I thought I was in love. I thought I knew what love was. I was in love, but I thought I knew what love was. Love was to still stick with a man that was beating the hell out of me with anything that he got his hands on. That nigga come attack me like he was a football player. Now you run up to a, 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 a football player and you tackle at the legs and throw him up in the air. And I never forget when that nigga did me like that. I never forget that. So help me God. I took beatings off of him for a long time. I stayed out there in the streets for a year. But when I got pregnant and he got popped, when our son was seven months old, it was incest in their family. This man here was still screwing his niece that they had been molesting ever since she was a little girl from the four of them, the brother. The girl's daddy, she, her first baby was by her daddy, and then he was the uncle. That's just the uncle, the uncle that's still living, was still fucking his goddamn niece. He knew she had a, a crack habit, and he would use the crack to, to get her. 
to do whatever she he wanted her to do. Mm. When he got popped at seven months and he went away, he got mad because I wouldn't send him some money to put on his books. Shit, how could I? I wasn't on no child support, I wasn't on no food stamps, I wasn't on no type of government assistance. Mm. How could somebody want me to send them some money and I'm up here raising my baby by myself? My mom wasn't helping me. I didn't want her help anyway. She always tried to use her money to try to control me. Anyway, after he got popped, when he came out of jail, I was some was six years old when he came out. By then, I had done bought me a house, was in college. In my second year of college at University of Houston downtown, Working for Emily and Mars Candy, they the ones that make Snickers, Three Musketeers, Milky Way, Skittles, and Starburst. I had done bought me a house, a three bedroom, two bath house for me and my four year old. I had done build my money up. I had five bank accounts, and the sixth one was a CD account for my son. He was four years old. I couldn't believe it when his mail first came. It had his name first, and then me as the custodian parent. I thought that was so cool, but it was hard too for me. It was hard because when he got out, I told him I wasn't going to never take him back. Because hmm. I thought maybe them beating days was over with. But them beating days wasn't over with. He cried so bad and he asked me could he move in my house. Hmm. Mind you, the Lord had done, the Lord had done bless me because I had to grab on to the Lord. Because once he went and got locked up, that was it. That was it. There wasn't nobody that, that could be there to pick up the, the backbone of, 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 our, of me and my child. It was the dope dealer, you hear me? The one I fell in love with, who, want, who I wanted the baby by. Hmm. While he locked up, I grabbed onto the Lord. I ain't had no other choice. I walked up the streets at nighttime, saying Psalms 121, where I lift up my eyes unto the Lord for which come my help. And my mom, She'll have my child because I be done ran off and left my child with my mom, you hear me? Because my addiction still would kick in every now and then. Because I was straddling the fence. One, one part of me wanted to do right and one part of me still tried to fuck up. So finally, I gave all of myself to the Lord. Uh, and I saw how the Lord was overflowing my cup. Say, when I say I was walking, I know what it's like to be all the way down. I know what it's like to give the Lord your mind, body, and soul, and heart. You hear me? The Lord don't never want half your heart. He wants your whole heart. You say, don't come to him double-minded. He wants you to come to him single-minded. I said, let me try the Lord. God, I don't try all kinds of crack and shit, all kinds of dope and shit. Why not try him? Because I was at my last straw. I, could, I couldn't take it. I had already got suicidal. I wanted to take my life. I don't try that three times throughout my whole years. Mm -hmm. Start walking in the Bible, start reading it, meditating the word, reading the Bible day and night. He say study and meditate his word day and night, daily. Hmm. You, to read the Bible and not walk it, it don't do you no good. It wasn't doing you no good. But if you walk it, uh, that's when you follow in the instructions. In the instructions, at first I couldn't understand that Bible. Hmm. Besides, before that, my mom them had already been putting me in all these rehabs. Boy, I fell in love with this guy, you understand me? The big book wasn't doing me no good. Them rehabs, all they do is talk about the dope. Man, when I come back out, I was going right back to the drug. Huh? So I said, I let the big, the Bible be my big book. So I started reading. I started following them instructions. I started getting in the habit, practicing, making it part of my routine every single day, dealing with today and today only. Hmm? He tells you that in Matthew 7, verse 30 and 31 about don't worry about something to eat. Don't worry about something to wear. And he'll tell you about don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will take care of itself. Mm. I've been dealing with monsters all my life. I let that, I let that demon come move in. I let, I let him talk me into moving, and there I go again. I call myself trying to do the right thing. Um, cause my sister, she'll be, one of my sisters, she with one man, but then two of her kids, by another man. Then the other sister I got, she, she with one man, but one of her kids by this man, one of her kids, by, and the other one by this here man. And I said, I was trying to say, I really was just trying to set an example, you know, by trying to make it with the father of my child by letting him come back in my life, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be fair for me to keep him away from our son. But all the time, he, 
He didn't try to build no relationship with our child anyway. I still was the mama and daddy of our child. He ain't had no relationship at all. To this day, they barely do have one. But I let him go and move in the house that the Lord had blessed me with because I was godly. I let an ungodly man move into that house, not thinking. I'm thinking I'm doing the right thing uh, by trying to have a relationship and make it with the father of my child. But when thinking about one of us is godly and one of us is ungodly. Mm. That's in the Bible when he talks about unequally yoked. Mm. I still love this here man knowing that he was ungodly and I was godly. Um, the Lord had fixed it where I had got such a good job that I had all the bills that a married couple would have. Every time I wanted me a new vehicle, the Lord didn't let me get it out the parking lot. The Lord had let me get my vehicle off the showroom floor. No co-signer, no nothing, no none of that. I like gas, water, cable, alarm, something my grass need doing, uh, property taxes, school taxes, homeowners insurance, flood insurance, all the couple that a married couple would have. Uh, just me and my baby all that time. So that nigga came home and I let, and I let him talk me. Well, there I go for that dick again. There I went, it was the dick. Tell you now, it was the dick. Mm. I stayed godly for a while, for 14 years. I'm still with, the, we're still with this man, you hear me? Um, being the bread, I'm the bread. That man didn't even have to ever open up an envelope. I bought him a car to drive to work. I bought him one to drive on the weekend. He didn't have to go shopping for himself. I went and did all the shopping for him. Everything I want to see him in. The Lord had blessed me with so much money and such a good job. I bought whatever I wanted to see him in, whatever I wanted to smell him in, what jewelry I wanted to match mine. His jewelry had to match mine, it's customized. I'm gonna I'm wear a Marquise in my ear, uh, three carat, four carat, and a two carat on my finger. That four carat used to be leaning so as if it was a hat. Now you have a hat cocked they to the side on your head. That's how that four carat used to be. I ain't, I ain't never had them send me to the beauty shop to get my hair did or my toes or nails. This sorry nigga didn't never neither. I had a mayor, it's a guy that was, a, he owned a patchy oil in Pasadena. By me being so uppity uppity out there in the field working for Eminem Mars Candy, cause that's a, that's a good candy company and our competitor was, was Hershey. I went to him and asked him to give this man a job for me. I paid for our wedding. Uh, on our honeymoon, you know what that nigga was doing? That nigga was sleeping in the bed. We didn't, I, didn't even, I didn't have no sex for my honeymoon. I had us a limousine. I gave that man everything that he could ever want that he didn't even ask me for. Because when the Lord bless you with things and he overflow your cup with blessings, he expect for you to share them. That's why he tell you in Genesis, he said, go and multiply and be fruitful. Fruitful is anything that's positive. Anything that's pleasing to the Lord, sharing, caring, helping, anything. Praying, paying my tithes. Say, when I say I walked it, and it felt good, I ain't gonna never be able to explain the feeling. I need that life back. Whether I got a man in my life or not, I need that life back with the Lord all the way in my life. Cause I didn't want for nothing. When he say he is your shepherd, you shall not want. Them instructions in that Bible is real just as sure as I'm sitting here. Them instructions are real if you just follow them. Uh, we got so many evil spirits around us in this here world that you can't even see with your eye. Evil spirits, principality, witchcraft, so much. You hear me? Satan, come, Satan is on his job more than 24 7. He stayed on that man. Uh, and when that man couldn't get his way with me, and that man called himself locking that bedroom door to whoop me for my son to kick that door in, my bedroom door in, and come in there with a bat. It hurted me that my son had to, to hear and see something like that between me and his father. But it hurted me more that my son had to come in there and rescue me to just to get that man to stop. Because mm -hmm. I thought them, them ass beating days was over with. Mm -hmm. I didn't think he'll come home and still put his hands on me. As much as I was giving to him and doing for him, uh, he didn't have to worry about nothing. Uh, uh, I'm gonna be careful when I chew me one this time. Uh, 
That man don't done so much to me. That man had my lips looking like Daffy Duck. I had hear from my mom for two weeks because that man had bust me in my mouth so bad. Both my lips. If you could have saw how I looked at I took some ass whooping out with pipes. I knew he was whoop me with everything. To this day, I still could say, I stayed with him because I loved him. Mm. But I know now that that's not what love is. I had to learn that in 1 Corinthians, the whole chapter 13. It's, it's all about love. See, my God is about love and righteousness. He's all about, you got to show him that you love him. You can tell God that you love him, but if you ain't showing him, it don't mean doodly damn. You're a God of action, man. That's the same way you would have to be in a relationship with somebody. You can tell them you love them. You have to show a person that you love them. He said in Ephesians 5 and 1, be imitators of mine walk in love. The Lord love me, the good and the bad. Uh, my good is starting to outweigh my bad now. Uh, and I thank the Lord for it. But I'm going through some terrible ass storms to learn from a man. I'm tired. It seems like everybody in my life are monsters to me. To this day, he called me crackheads and everything, but I'm the same woman who gave him everything. I, I told him, you'll never find another woman who will treat you like I did. Because uh, I, I was so happy with my marriage. I thought I was happy with my marriage. Uh, to, I dare you to clean up my house. I dare you to wash dishes. I dare you to touch the washing machine and dry it. I'm going to do it all. I'm gonna do it all. I ain't gonna never cook late. Don't never put no pots and pans in my refrigerator. And everything in the house, I had no furnish the whole damn house myself. This here man here, I couldn't even believe that uh, when I found he was cheating with the H and R block woman and cheating with the niece and cheating. Man, that devastated me till I relapsed. I had six years left on my house, and I would have been through paying for my house. You hear me? I ain't been the same since. Huh? I've been on drugs ever since. Yeah. You hear me? I didn't let no man come in my life when I was on them drugs for them eight years until I started bucking that dick all the time. You hear me? Uh, I can't. I don't like no goddamn. I don't like big dicks or none of that. Uh, I'm old fashioned. I'm antique. I'm set in my ways. I'm 57 years old. Uh, I'm the type who say I was cooking every day, uh, working my job, going to school full time, and being a PTA mom uh, at, at the school for my son. When they have field trips, I'm finna go be a chaperone and go on a field trip with them uh, to help take care of the kids. And all the kids used to love to come to my house and want to spend the night. But we had some demons in that house, and I tried to stick with that man as long as I could. But when I, when I relapsed like I did, and that man just say, it's okay, you can get back up, you can do it again. And man, that, that man beat me up, him, my mama did, they beat me up, my aunties did, they beat me up with words, they tell you in the Bible, he say the tongue, the tongue is full of deadly poison, that it cuts like a double-edged blade. I, I believe that, that's true, I'm a witness to that. So I learned that in the Bible. It's so much that I learned in the Bible that it's gonna have to take a man that's gonna have to have the Lord in his life on this round. Gonna have to take a man. And sooner or later, the Lord gonna help me get that monkey off my back. Mm. So far, I ain't, I ain't sit up and sold no cat, suck no dick. I still ain't gave up no cat neither. I don't be trying to hear nothing no man be talking about. I did it so much, man. I did it so much. This one here jumping in and out, but this one here. When I had that little five pounds and six ounce baby, borderline premium. And you couldn't get me to have another baby. I got on them birth control pills and stayed on them motherfuckers for 10 years straight. Mm. My, my cat's so small, man, you, you wouldn't imagine. I'm probably better than some of these young women, my body is, especially down there with my muscles and stuff. I, I thank the Lord every day now for you. I talk to the Lord every day, and it ain't a day that I'm, I'm going to let go by that I cannot leave you out. I cannot leave you out of my life. When I walk through here, I'm always going to look for that, I always look for your car. Um, and I be wanting to stop just to see how you're doing. I don't be wanting to, I just be, you know, I'm growing to care about somebody who, who cares about what my life was about. And, and, and I got to quit running from that. I be just want to stop just to give you a big old hug, man. 
big old hood. I'm not gonna lie, I get chill bumps, my nipples get on hard. I'm not gonna lie, I'm just gonna be honest with you. Huh? It took me a long time to learn how to be real with myself before I could learn to be real with others. Ain't no sense of me lying about it, man. I can't, I'm just gonna tell you the truth. Huh? I'll never take another black man again, you hear me? Ain't nothing I could do with one. I'm the type who like, it's okay for the man to cheat, but then when you cheat and you just go, and you go all the way backwards, and you bring some crack in my house. Crack had never been in that house ever since I got clean in the law. And the Lord blessed me with that house and I closed on that. That nigga was locked up. That nigga didn't, didn't put me in that goddamn house. He was in jail. He didn't even know I had bought me a damn house. You hear me? And you bring some drugs in my house that had me towed down for eight motherfucking years. Eight years, huh? And my son found it. Cause his feet was growing so big to, he put his foot in one of them shoes and there, there was a pill ball in there and that was the crack. Mm. You don't have to go hang around other people for you to re relapse on drugs. Huh? Went home by myself all the time cause he in the streets flipping around in the vehicles that I don't bought him. Never one time did he ever like riding me and our son around. Not one time, I never. You hear me? Had to have AAA, AAA, AAA plus come out and unlock the car. Mm. So I could see what was in the car, because he had only one key. Found an ounce of cocaine in the trunk. Hear me? Mm -hmm. All that there just had to lay it up uh, to me being, uh, I started being unhappy. Because this was a man that I was doing anything to make him happy and please him. Mm -hmm. To God, dog it, I started losing and spinning out of control and not spending no more time with the Lord. When the lady say that this is the car that be over there, somebody called me on my phone, and it wasn't a lady, but it was my yard man coming out who do my yard. He said, your car over there at that house right now. So I jumped in my truck. I always drive, I'm a Chevrolet person. I don't have 3,000 GTs, 280ZX, Camaros, um, but it was a Tahoe. Um, I jumped in that Tahoe and went over there and blocked my Cadillac here that I bought for him. B blocked his car in, I'll take that back. Blocked his car in. Mm. Went up there to the door and knocked, knocked on the door and asked him to open, open the door. I had, my, I had my gun license, my handgun license, but concealed handgun license. Mm. I told the two pistols, a 32 and a 38. I call them Billy Bob and Bessie. I love hanging out at the gun range every week with my homegirl named Stacy. She a white girl. I, I like stuff like that. They wouldn't open the door, they cracked that door. When they cracked that door, I propped my foot up there against that door so they couldn't close that door open, close it, and push that door all, all the way open. They told him to bring his motherfucking ass up out of there. I said, I'm finna shoot you in your kneecap. I, I thought about how he used to beat me. I said, now nah, I'm finna shoot you in your kneecap and give you a limp for the rest of your life. Mm. He took off running down, by the, down the street. Um, he couldn't get in the car and take off because I had to pull it up and block the car in. Mm. So I had to talk him in to come back getting, the, getting in the car and bring the car to the house. Mm. I, ain't, I ain't mess with him. He came to him, he wanted, he wanted to start packing the stuff, I let him. I let him start packing the stuff and let him leave. I said, oh dear. He started staying at the in town suite. That nigga left me with every single bill it was. That nigga didn't say, oh, I'ma help you on your bills, which I didn't need it anyway. Huh? But then I had to spent out of control and started chasing after him and stop, stop associating with the Lord, you understand me? It wasn't all about the Lord no more, it was all about that dick, you hear me? Well, it's probably the only dick that you fuck. You get crazy about it, you'll get sprung on it too. I waited till I was 30 something years old before I let a man ever eat on me. That shit there. I be don't lock my kneecaps around a person's neck. That's something I'll never be able to handle. I, that probably make me sprung too, behind a man, to let one uh, do that to me all the time. I be don't lost my mind, you hear me? That man wouldn't be able to fart for me being there to smell it, you hear me? I'm just telling you the truth. I love being real now. I don't went through so much, you can't help but to be real. Mm. To this day, I, I call him every now and then. When it's Father's Day, I send him a text message. 
He won't, he won't send nothing back. He won't say nothing. But he talks to my son. He talks to our son more, more than uh, than I associate with him. Uh, but his life ain't been the same. Cause he's the type to give me a hundred and fifty for Mother's Day, and he'll say, "What you gonna give me?" I'm gonna give you a thousand dollars. I'm gonna put it on a prepaid card so you can do whatever you wanna do with it. The sky's the limit. When you got the Lord in your life, the sky's the limit. When you're so happy, uh, you see, you don't even think about this here strength. All my strength was coming from the Lord. Everything I had was coming from the Lord. Huh? Before I let him come in my life, I didn't need no man. The Lord was giving me everything I want. Everything you ask the Lord for in a righteous way, he'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. If it's in a righteous way, he's going to give it to you. If I was to say, well, let me hit the lottery, Lord, that's that, uh, you ain't finna hit no. I ain't, he ain't finna be down with, with something like that. But all the other things. When you say he is your shepherd, you shall not want. I made a difference in a lot of people's lives in my family. It was like I was taking care of, I was the bread of my own house and had to be the bread of theirs. These same ones that sit up there and choose to disassociate with me because of my addiction, when they house fell in the foreclosure, they called me. When one got pregnant for another man, knowing you got this here man, uh, they calling me for 600 and something for an abortion. I hope one day they, they all see this here, this video, I me, mean, because ain't none of it is a lie. None of it. That mother of mine, I even had, Lord was doing me so good, I even had her on her allowance every other week, $100. She'll ask me the same question. What you want me to do? I don't care what you do with it. Put it on one of your bills. I'll go get something that you want to get. But if you can see how they ass is acting with me now, this time when I do grab back on the Lord all the way, and I've been taking my baby steps, and this journey going to be over with. It's going to be over with for me sooner or later. And I, I believe that, mm, that I'm, I'm going to come off this here crack all the way, that I'm going to give all of me again. This is going to be round two. This is going to be the second time. I know what I did for me to relapse, and i never do it again. I learned from it. i never slack up in nothing that ever got something to do with the Lord. I'm always, no matter how good your dick is, how good you eating, how happy you are, I, I never change towards the Lord. He gonna be my, he gonna, I'm gonna make sure I keep him my everything. Uh, Cause I don't never wanna come back to this type of life ever again in life. Uh, to live like this, all I do is suffer uh, and torture myself. He keep asking me how long, my child, you gonna keep being foolish? And I say, you sure right, Lord. And he'll say, well, act like it did. You know that? He say, well, act like it did. Cause, cause I am. I am being foolish. I already know what to do. I already know to grab on to him, seek ye first. I already come to him for rest. I already know he wasn't. Well, what's taking you so long? Huh? What's taking you so long? And he right. And I can't even answer it. I can't even answer it. But I love the Lord. I'm steady being in my Bible. I'm steady quoting my scriptures. Not because when you don't, evil spirits will make, you, make your body their home, whether you want them to be your home or not. Uh, but when you keep them, the words, the words is a, is a weapon. They the sword. They the sword that go to the armor of God, you hear me? Mm. They'll flee from that. Mm. Uh, it's hard for me to grab on to the Lord this time, and I ain't even on drugs as bad as I was the last time. But eventually I am going to do it. I, and I got, a, I got a big reason for me coming back and visiting California. Uh, as long as you're here, I will be coming back. I'm going to show you, though. Just like you have to show the Lord that you love him because he, he, he's a God of action. I have to show you, too, that you play a big part in my life. I have to show you that. I have to show you that. And it's a reason for me to stay there constantly now to see you. It's a reason behind it, um, and I better take heed to it. That's why the money I get from you, that's why I can't none of it go on no drugs. Can't none of it go on no drugs, you hear me? The money I get from you, not even a penny, man. Not even a penny. You know how hard that is for me? It's hard for me not to spend none of your money on drugs, but, but I'll be doing it be doing it, not spending none of it on drugs. Yeah. I thought I couldn't do it at first. I thought I couldn't do it, but I can. It's getting, it's getting easier. 
chocolate and eat them. When I leave here, I'm going over there. Ice cream making me happy, chocolate ice cream. I'm going straight over there to get me a pint of chocolate ice cream. Cause that'll make me happy. I got my clothes out the way, washing my clothes. Got them out the way. I got clean clothes, clean pajamas. I wear all my underwear, Victoria's Secret. Instead of sending me my, my bills, I need to go and send a payment in on them. You know, my life is what I make of it. I have to not try not to block around these here certain crowds that don't want nothing. You know I mean? I'm not better than them, but in order for me to uh, to change a little bit by little bit, I, I I had to learn how to cut some of them loose. And there's some more I got to cut loose. You hear know I me? Mean? And I uh, and I've been cutting their asses loose because they don't they don't mean well for me. The only one be looking out for my well-being is the Lord and maybe you. I appreciate you listening to me sooner or later to talk about uh, my life. It's not going to hurt and be painful to me no more sooner or later. Sooner or later, you hear me? All right, Alicia. Thank you so much for talking to me again. Love listening to you. You're going to end up being a real good friend. You're going to be one of my good friends. You watch and see what I tell you. Mark my words. I'm claiming it in the name of Jesus. All you do is help us all day long, all of us, all of us with our worst man. If you know we, you know we be ready to fuck up, but it's one of us out of your whole bunch got to try to do good. It's me. It's me.